Welcome to the Happiness Alliance Data Gathering Module. We're going to talk about gathering data. Now, before you start gathering your data, you really want to put together a strategy. Within this strategy, you want to have a really good idea of how you're going to raise awareness. Too often, people decide to gather the Happiness Index data in their community and they don't spend enough time raising awareness, getting the word out, engaging people. We have another module about this and you're highly encouraged to look at that. It also includes ideas for creating your strategy. So just remember that, but let's go back to data collection. There are different ways to gather data. If you've taken the happiness index online, then you've already experienced one of them. You can gather data online on your own website, or you can also use social media. There's myriads of ways that you can gather data online. Another way that you can gather data with the happiness index is by mail. You can print the ballot, we call it the ballot, or the questionnaire, put it in an envelope with another envelope that has a stamps on it, and then mail it out. Now, if you do this, you'll probably be very successful if you've done a whole lot of awareness raising. Otherwise, people will see that envelope in the mail and they'll just put it into the recycle or the garbage. Another way that you can gather data is you can hand out paper ballots at an event. Now, this works really well when you have a tight-knit community, such as a church or a temple or a community center where people go and really know each other. And the other part that is important to have this method work well is you have what we call a community bridge. Now, a community bridge is somebody who understands what you are looking for, agrees, sees how it benefits themselves as well as the community, and will really advocate for people in that community taking the happiness index. Another way that you can gather data is with interviews. You can do these in person, door to door. You always wanna be in pairs and teams. You can also do it at events and locations. You can even stand outside of a grocery store or at a fair or something like this. You might use a tablet and do this online, or you might use paper ballots. And yet another way is via telephone. Now we've talked about gathering data via telephone before and how this is getting to be more and more difficult. So we won't go into that today. When you gather data with interviews, you really wanna think about who's gonna be gathering that data. You can hire a pollster. This can be rather expensive. You can hire enumerators. If you do that, you want those enumerators to be well-trained. You can use volunteers. Again, they need to be well-trained. And members of your team or members of your community might be the people who would gather the data. Now, of course, we talked about hiring enumerators and how they need to be well-trained. And of course, everybody else does too. Now, how do you train your data gatherers? The key point that you want to remember is that to get good data, you need to have a neutral and uninfluential interview process. So for example, if your interviewer is making weird faces or frowning when they ask certain questions and smiling when they ask others, or using a different tone of voice when they're giving certain answers, you're going to be influencing how people answer that will skew your data, that will make your data so that it's not very good data and you can't depend on it. Another thing that can really complicate and make things untrustworthy in your data is when an interviewer starts to explain questions using their own words or rearranges the order of the questions. We always ask satisfaction with life questions first, because if we start asking questions that perhaps make people feel a little uncomfortable or a little angry or maybe more joyful, then 
we change how they would answer subsequent questions. So we want to make sure that we always ask those satisfaction with life questions first. So that's the Cantrell ladder and the life satisfaction, the worthwhile, and then the questions about happiness and anxiety. Okay, so you wanna have a script and you wanna train your data gatherers to stick to that script, to use a neutral tone and to never be judgmental, not to vary the question order and not to explain questions if someone doesn't understand. You train them and if somebody doesn't understand a question, they just leave that one blank. You also want to make sure that they don't engage in a lot of chit chat before or during the data gathering. Because if there's a lot of chit chat, people will start responding to the questions within the context of that chit chat and that could influence the data. Let's talk about incentives. Now incentives are something that you give people for taking the survey. Now in general, you do not want to give incentives because if you give incentives, you might be getting certain kinds of people and certainly you don't want to give large incentives because you don't know if those incentives are going to influence the way that people answer the questions. However, sometimes it's necessary to give incentives because people just simply won't take the survey. So when you give an incentive, you want it to be not too big, just enough that people are interested. And we can say the right amount should be about an hour of minimum wage. It can be in a gift card. So maybe a gift card for some coffees or a sandwich, or maybe going to a show, something like that, depending on how much things cost. All right, this is important. You want to make sure that your data gatherers never offer rewards or extra incentives for taking the survey. So for example, if you're trying to get data from people who work in a restaurant or from restaurant owners, you don't want to have a situation where your interviewers say, if you take the survey, we'll buy dinner from you, because that means that they are going to be influenced by how they respond to those questions they're going to want to please you because they're getting that extra reward. So incentives should be something that are given to everybody, no matter what, who takes the happiness index or to nobody and nothing more and nothing less. Let's talk about the script. Now in your script, you want to include the purpose of your project. Why are you collecting the happiness index data? This can just be one sentence or maybe two. You don't want it to be very long, but you want to be clear about why you're doing this and you want to be inspiring. So people are excited to take the happiness index because they love what you're doing. If you can tell the survey takers how they can find out about the results. And if you're going to use the happiness index data to engage the community, to perhaps figure out how the community can be happier, figure out how you can address misery, then let them know how they can get engaged in this process. You'll also want to tell them that we follow the European Union's GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, and that their data is secure, that it will never be sold, that it is anonymous, and that their identity cannot be found out. So nobody's going to go and say, oh, you answered this kind of question that way, and we don't like that, or something like that. A few tips for gathering data. First, start with yourself and your team. All of you take the happiness index, look at the data that you get and see what you can do with that. Also really think about what it felt like to take the happiness index. Then conduct interviews in teams. This is important because you don't want anybody to be unsafe. Another tip is practice and test your survey in terms of how you're going to be using that data. So for example, if you want to use the data to see how different neighborhoods or boroughs are doing, you want to make sure that you have all the neighborhoods and boroughs there in your questions. Now you might want to use the happiness index for a different purpose. So you want to make sure that you're gathering the data that you need to be able to use it. Last, make sure that you gather data during your practice sessions and practice analyzing that data. 
that will help you to make sure that you have all the questions in there that you need. Here's a model script for you. This is not prescriptive, it's just an idea. And you can use this and you can adapt it to develop your own script. Now you don't want your script to be too long, but it does need to have a certain amount of information so that people feel comfortable taking the happiness index. Here are a couple of exercises. In the first exercise, you pair up and go ahead and gather data from each other. Person one conducts an interview with person two, and then you swap roles. Next, you can use the same pair or you can switch partners. And one person is the interviewer. The other person is the person you're gathering data from who's answering the questions. And pretend the person who's answering the questions, maybe pretend like you just don't understand things very well, or pretend like you're a complicated person, something like that, and see how you manage that kind of situation. After you've swapped roles and done it again, then take a little time to discuss how you answered those questions and what you would do when you're in the field. And you can keep going with this until you feel really comfortable. Now, this exercise should not be done just once before you go out in the field. You should do it a few times until you feel really comfortable. And you can sit down as a group after you're done with the exercise and talk about what you learned and what you thought and what your impressions were. You're gathering data with this exercise, which you can use to practice your analysis. Another exercise is to hold a focus group. Now, you can do a focus group with people in your community, or you can even use people in your family if they would like to join and you don't have the funds to do a focus group with people in your community. Here's some steps for doing a focus group. You can also look online for all kinds of ways of doing a focus group. A focus group is a way to get really good information from your community and in-depth information, but the information is only going to be as good as your questions. So you need to have your strategy, you need to know your purpose, and then you can devise your own questions. Now here are a few questions. These are only informational and not prescriptive. So you should make up your own questions. So when you have your focus group, first you have them take the happiness index, then you can explain the purpose of your project, and then ask a question and have each one go around and answer that question and then do it again, the next question. If you have too many people in your focus group, you won't get through everybody. So you wanna keep your focus group small. A focus group of four people can be quite productive or six people as well. When you start getting, say 12 people, it either gets to be way too long or you just don't get answers from quite a few people. Now, some people think by talking and some people think in silence. So the people who think in silence, you probably won't get as good at answers from them from the talking part. But what you can do is you can give paper and pens and ask them to write down ideas that they haven't expressed aloud and then gather those at the end. You wanna have really good note taking for focus groups because you're gonna put a lot of effort into this. So you really wanna be taking good notes. And you might wanna have two or three note takers. And then you'll gather all of that information and put it together. And then you can analyze it for how you can really meet the purpose and the goals of your project. We hope you enjoyed this data gathering module and good luck to you on your happiness journey.